Welcome back to part two of this video series on the LM100A laser distance meter. In this video, I'll demonstrate practical uses for the distance meter. Okay, so let's do an outdoor test. Uh, it's a bright sunny day today. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure this fence here to see uh, just how much I would need to get in materials to do a fence replacement. So uh, we're gonna use the additive function of the straight line dimensions. So we'll start off with taking our first dimension. And one of the things you wanna do, let me show you that there, is that uh, make sure that's at zero degrees or close to it. Cause it's real easy when you're outdoors to tip it too high up or too far down. And then the uh, laser won't be able to find the opposite side, in this case, the board I'm shooting towards. Okay, so we start with this wall, turn the laser on. We can see the laser bouncing on the fence over there. We shoot the measurement and it's 12.96 feet. Go over here to do the next measurement to the other wall. I got to push the plus button first, so it adds them up. Got the plus going there. We can take it against the wall there, shoot the next measurement, turns on the laser. I got an error because I'm pointing up too high. Okay, in that case, I got uh, almost 41 feet. So now we got a total between those two fences, 50, 50, almost 54 feet. So now let's go to this one. And uh, that's a long way to go. That's like 80 feet over there. So uh, let's see if we can get it on the first try without errors again you got to point the laser exactly at the other fence and that's a long distance to go especially especially when you can't see it let's see what we get you got an error because they're tilting up too high another error let's try it down a little lower still getting errors well probably kind of pointing down too low Okay, so uh, there I got a 80.34 feet. Took me a while to get it pointed straight, but that's not a fault of the instrument. That's my fault because number one, I don't have a target over there. Number two, I'm shooting between trees. Okay, for the next fence, I want to go all the way to the edge of the house. So I'm going to turn this on, turn the laser on, and see if I can actually spot it in there. Okay, that gave me 31.3 feet, so I'm now at 165 and a half feet. And so now we just got one little section of fence. I can just take it across from between the house and there. See the laser on the fence over there. And, and that gives me another eight and a half feet. So a total of 174.17 feet. To measure in square units, you start by pushing this button till the square units icon shows on the screen. In this example, I'm going to measure the top of my modified table saw. I start by placing targets on the edges of the extended table so the laser distance meter has a surface to reflect the laser beam. A piece of paper works fine as a target. In this demonstration, I'll be measuring in square feet. The straight line distance units are in inches. You can also change the units to calculate square meters. First, I start by measuring across the length of the table saw, press the read button, and I get 53.5 inches. Then, to check the width, I place the laser distance meter perpendicular to the first measurement and point it at the other target. However, when taking this measurement, I see that the reading is 86.2 inches, which is obviously much higher than I know it should be. So I look again at where the laser is pointed, and I can see that it missed the target. Well, instead of having to go back and redo all the dimensions again, I can just press the clear button to erase the last reading. Then aim it at the target again and press the read button. And now I see the measurement is 54.6 inches. Now that I have both the length and width measurements, the laser distance meter calculates the total square footage, which is 20.29 square feet. 
Of course, measuring this small of an area would be just as easy to do with a tape measure and a calculator, but for a larger area like a room, this would be a quicker and easier way to do it. Okay, let's see how we would uh, measure for volume. And in this example, I'm going to use a, a box which uh, represents a room. And uh, we want to measure the length times the width times the height, which would, uh, uh, for finding volume, as you recall, that's, uh, that's what you do. You measure length times width times height, and that gives you total volume. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, pushing this button down here uh, gets you in the mode. And in this case, uh, that's for uh, square units. We don't want square units. We want to do cube. Okay, so you look for that little cube icon. You can see we're measuring from the base or bottom of the unit. Okay, so just make sure that's either you know either on the floor or against the wall when you're doing your measurements. And uh, so we'll start with the first measurement. And you can see that it's lined up to the edge there. The laser's on the wall. And then we push the button. That gives us our first dimension of one wall, and that's 22.2. Uh, now we can measure you know, anywhere basically in here to the uh, ceiling height. And uh, so we've got the laser pointing at the ceiling. We do another dimension. And you notice it beeped twice to tell us that it captured the dimension. In this case, uh, 18.5. And then the final dimension going across the room. And you can see the laser is reflected off of the opposite wall. We press it one more time. We got our double beep. And that gives us all of the uh, three dimensions that we need. Uh, which are multiplied to each other. Uh, and that ends up with a really, really big number that needs to do, be divided by uh, 12 uh, cubed. And that uh, would convert into feet in this example. And a total uh, of feet would be uh, 4.36 cubic feet. Pretty straightforward. Okay, now I'm going to uh, demonstrate the painter function. And so uh, what the painter function allows you to do is to uh, measure one time from the floor to the ceiling. Now this is assuming that the room that you're going to be painting has a ceiling all at the same height. Uh, it doesn't have like uh, cathedral ceilings, for example. Uh, but in this particular room, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to measure all of the walls uh, separately, but we're only going to measure the ceiling one time, and it's all going to be additive. In other words, uh, we'll first measure the uh, to the ceiling, and then as we measure each wall, it will uh, calculate or store the calculations as far as the square footage for each of those walls and then give you a total at the bottom. So uh, let me demonstrate real quickly how that works. You press this function key here uh, three times until you see the painter icon. That's that little one right there. It looks like two walls adjoining each other. And then uh, just take the uh, laser measuring device, set it up in one corner where you got the laser pointing to the ceiling in this case, and uh, then press the button. And that gives you your first measurement. In this case, we're just measuring in inches and showing 18.5 inches. Then rotating it to measure the first wall, and you see we're measuring to the, uh, the back of the uh, device, the back of the, of the measuring device. And we press the button there, and that gives us our second dimension which is 22.2 inches. Then we just bring it to the next wall in this example. And uh, you can see we've got the laser pointing to the opposite wall. Push the button and it beeps twice and it tells us that it's got a measurement there of 18.4 uh, inches. And then we're gonna do the third wall here, same way as we did the first one, just measuring the length of the wall from the floor. We push the button. Now when it gets to the third one, it doesn't beep twice. you got to push it a second time to where you hear that beep beep, and that tells you got the measurements. So that's 22.4 inches, resulting in a total area of 8.13 square feet. So now you have a good estimate for determining how many gallons of wall paint you'll need for your quote to the customer. Next, I'll demonstrate using the laser distance meter to measure the vertical distance of an object or structure when you are unable to get close to it for making direct measurements. For example, we want to measure the height of this wall, but there is a small stream in the way that prevents us from getting close enough to the house to take the measurement. Using the laser distance meter, we can point it in a horizontal line to the bottom of the wall, which will record that straight line dimension and store it. 
we'll call this dimension A. Then pointing the distance meter to the top of the wall, we'll take a second measurement, which will record the length of the hypotenuse. We'll call this dimension C. Now, since we have a right angle, we can use a Pythagorean theorem to determine the height of the wall B, which is the square root of C squared minus A squared. In this demonstration, I've set up a test fixture to see if Hupar's laser distance meter can calculate the height of a point on a board three meters away from the laser distance meter. The board has been checked for plumb using a spirit level and Hupar's laser level and positioned exactly three meters from a point on the board exactly 150 centimeters below the target at the top of the board. Up to this point, I've been pretty happy with the functionality and accuracy of the LM100A, but when doing Pythagoras measurements, this is where I ran into problems. You see, in order to do these types of measurements, you must be able to rotate the laser distance meter starting from the true horizontal, that is, zero degrees, to an angle either up or down as the device takes these measurements and performs calculations by determining right triangles based on the Pythagorean theorem. That being the case, you will need to use a tripod, and Hubar stipulates this. However, one thing that does not seem to be taken into consideration is that most camera tripods have ball mounts that place the rotational axis below the camera shoe where you attach the laser distance meter and will therefore affect the calculations as the reference plane will shift aft and down when the laser distance meter is tilted up and as I found affects the accuracy by more than 2% and that is significant. Additionally, the dimensions for camera ball mounts are not standard and will affect the location of the pivot point causing erroneous hypotenuse readings. Another issue is the location of the camera shoe when placed in the ball mount, as it could be placed forward or aft by several centimeters and cause erroneous readings. With these inconsistencies in mind, through trial and error, I ended up building multiple test setups in an effort to eliminate the discrepancies, and then I performed hundreds of tests using multiple tripod configurations, and even changing measurements reference points on the meter to find the best setup that would provide the most accuracy. Unfortunately, I was never able to come up with the right combination to meet the Hupar accuracy limits in the specifications. And after many emails back and forth with Hupar, and never really getting a clear explanation from the technical department, other than to set the reference point to the middle when using a tripod, I was only able to get it to where I would trust it with Pythagoras measurements upwards of 3% deviation. I also found that when taking Pythagoras measurements, the horizontal distance always changes from what the true distance is, usually to a larger distance so that the right angle calculations will be correct, even though the actual dimensions are off. You see, the internal software of the LM100A will always calculate the right angle dimension based on the hypotenuse reading it takes, but then it changes the base reading so the Pythagorean calculations will be correct. But this in no way reflects the true physical dimensions. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was back in school, that would be called cheating, where the teacher would give the answer and the student quickly erases incorrect calculations and redo it to match the teacher's answer. The bottom line, though, I'll, I'll be generous and I'll give Hupar four stars for the LM100A. This little device is accurate and very convenient for any dimensions taken in straight line of sight. I would trust the accuracy for straight line, area, volume, and the painter calculations, but I would only use it for right angle or Pythagorean measurements when only needing an accuracy of more than, say, 3%. Regardless of the shortcomings at Hupar's current price of around $40, I'd still recommend this product due to its convenience and speed of use compared to traditional tape measures. Well, if you're still watching at this point, thanks a lot for sticking with me through this lengthy video series on the LM100A. And if you liked it, please give a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell to get notified when I release new videos. And most of all, have a great day.